Hello and welcome to Happy Hour. My name is Phil and this is the Christmas episode. Ching, 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 ching. Oh and for those who don't celebrate Christmas, this is the Wednesday episode. <laughs> Today's guest is a recurring one, having already come on to talk about his travels in Ukraine and his bike journey from Ireland to Japan. He is the three-time winner of Best Mullet at the Georgia County Fair <laughs> and is currently joining us from Pakistan. Welcome oh back to God. the show, Connor McBee, a.k.a. Small Brained American. Wow. Another great intro. 10 out of 10. Very nice. <laughs> I like how you're making a fake news about my, my mullet. Although, you know, it is, it is quite nice, uh, but I have not entered it in any county fairs, unfortunately. Not yet. What, what do people say yeah. when they see you and, and see the, the, the flow you got riding back there? right and no they say i don't know they say they like it um yeah they just say they like my hair because i mean honestly it's mostly like a uh, american like western european thing i mean even in like dude i feel like 90 percent of the world yeah. has the same haircut like men just have the undercut really basically everywhere so then when they see long hair especially in like you know middle east and eastern europe you know uh they're like oh yeah nice hair they like it's it, just so. like that guy's from that guy's from bratislava or Georgia. <laughs> Where the fuck is Bratislava? Did you just make that up? Uh, Slovakia. Oh, well, I feel stupid now. Oh, no. We, oh, no. We have an Small American brain American podcast. strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what's the story behind changing the, 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 the name again? So I know you went from McBeats13 mm. to Connor McBee to now you've, t you've unbranded yourself as a... Yeah. as yourself and now you're small brained american yeah well i just figured i don't know every time i thought of small brained american i just laughed and i it just it's just funny dude like every time i see it now i'm just like fuck yeah like i'm just embracing like <laughs> my ignorance in the world and you know i like it, it's like poetic too kind of like i don't want to be cheesy but like i go up, i go to these places and i have no plan i have i don't do any research i'm just like yeah let's just see what it's all about so i kind of like approach the world where's bratislava ah <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I can just see you now, you know, in like five to ten years, you're going to be on some morning talk show and they're like, all right, so our next guest today is, uh, is this right? Uh, small Brit. Can we not just use your name? <laughs> right, right, right. But, you know, to be fair, by then I'll probably rebrand it like another nine times. So who knows what I'll be by then. <laughs> Fuck, by, by then you might be big brain American the way you're traveling. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, like I actually get educated and I, I you know, learn a thing or two about the world. Like fucking imagine that, dude. I don't know. I think it'd be like a good name for like a second channel. Like I do like my my hot takes and like educated news content on the second channel. I don't know. We'll see. But for now I'm I'm happy being ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're in Pakistan. What's uh what's dude. Pakistan like? It's uh it's intense, dude. It's intense. Um You know, I was in India for like three weeks before this and you know they're very similar they were the same country up until like 70 ish years ago so i will say my experience yeah. in pakistan has been markedly more strange i had like uh okay so i want to be like very diplomatic with how i describe this because i know like people have been very hospitable <laughs> with me very very extremely hospitable in pakistan like Dude, uh, what's say December 6th. I've been here since November 27th. So what's that, like eight or nine days? Like over a week. And I have not spent any money. Like zero. No, no, I spent $3 maybe. But then someone gave me $5. So I'm like, I I'm making money over here, man. It's, it's crazy. They're giving they you just, money? Well, that's a whole... That's a whole story we can get into, but yeah, someone gave me. What like did you have to do rupees. for that five bucks, Connor? Okay, we can get into it if you want. It's 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 kind of a, a long thing, but. Uh, <laughs> um, so I met like I have a, I met a guy in London on couch surfing, a Pakistani fellow, and he gave me all these contacts for over here, and one of them was the son of uh, a former prime minister of Pakistan. And also, like, directly related to uh, the Prophet Muhammad. Like, they descend from Muhammad. So, like, they're very high up in the Islam faith. Fucking royalty, then. Very powerful, you know, wealthy family. Um, and, you know, I went to his house and, like, just 
very wealthy people you know they have like chefs and drivers and um security and like just i've actually never experienced that level of of wealth you know um and oh, shit. it was crazy dude and like so one of his actually if you've been to the middle east like you know they have like these like shrines all over the place like uh for imams i think they're called which i don't know what exactly that means but it's like someone that's high up in the islam faith and in this instance they were related to muhammad so like there's a shrine dedicated to this imam in iraq and it's like this big tourist attraction people from all over the world islam uh, muslim people come from all over the world to go to this uh this shrine and i went there right and then so fast forward like i don't know whatever a month or two and i'm in pakistan and i meet the guy who was related to that imam like the guy that i meet is like when he dies they're gonna build a shrine for him just like that oh shit yeah he's very important. so yeah dude uh, i actually recorded the experiences it's a crazy ass video um and i want to like i want to make sure i'm being like respectful and everything i don't want to like embarrass the guy but but it was just like a very foreign experience to me like people are flocking to see this guy you know like throwing money at him and like giving him gifts and everything and um you know i met i met with him he's like a really humble down-to-earth guy like speaks great english he's like 72 like older guy and really sweet guy nice. but you know he commands the respect of thousands of people dude like you know it's it's i've honestly never seen anything like it and i was rolling with this guy um his i don't know if you call him an imam i don't really know technically what it's called but i was rolling is, with is this he, guy is he nephew. like a like like pakistani justin bieber like he just people just start yelling and freaking out wherever he goes yeah dude it was it was like i was in the beatles like he because we, <laughs> we went to this like because dude because like the, the people are so humble like the guy i was staying with he wasn't like oh yeah you're gonna come to this and it's gonna be this huge thing and blah blah blah, blah. he was just like yeah come to this prayer we're gonna have a prayer in like this little town outside of lahore pakistan that's where i'm at and i'm like yeah sure cool and we roll up, you know, get a private driver. We roll up and like there's like security and they're pushing people away. And like people are like trying to cram into this like little uh, like mosque ish area, like adjacent to this mosque. And I mean, they're like pushing people. Dude. It was intense. And um, and they like gave me a front row seat to see this guy like speak and say some prayer. And meanwhile, they're like throwing money at him and like showering him with gifts and giving him food and everything. And. And I'm just like the honored guest. Like I'm like, obviously not to his level, but like, I don't know. If you go to India, Pakistan, you realize like tourists, especially like, you know, European white tourists get like royalty treatment. You know what I mean? And I haven't seen anyone get treated better than a tourist until I saw these people. Like they're truly like people, I don't want to say worship them, but like they are, they take it very seriously, dude. And, uh, but I was just oh. there with them, like adjacent to all this like crazy ass shit. Like, and so anyway, someone come up to this guy and gives him a thousand rupees and which is like five dollars. And he just turns immediately and just gives it to me. <laughs> so that's how I made money <laughs> in Pakistan. <laughs> OK, nice. Yeah. And I, we, yeah. we've been chatting, I guess, in the last little week or I guess in the last week or so. And you, you've, you've been sick. You've been not feeling so yeah. well. Yeah, dude, I got like gnarly gnarly food poisoning dude i think it was it was at so that guy's family owns a number of properties throughout pakistan and like farmland and businesses and everything and and so we went to another one of his like i would call it a compound they have like multiple houses they own like mosques and like burial grounds and like um businesses and like it's like a fucking compound with like security and everything and so we roll up and we meet the uncle, like the powerful guy I was mentioning earlier. And, you know, we have like a nice little chat and then he gives us like some food, like a little kebab wrap, fucking kebabs and, and some Ooh. fruit. And I ate it like, you know, whatever. And then that night I was like, so sick, dude. Like I haven't experienced food poisoning like that in a long time. I was, I was mentioning to you, like I haven't thrown up that hard since I drank ayahuasca. <sighs> It was gnarly, dude. Fuck. It was gnarly. That's insane, man. At yeah, least you were um, in really good... It sounds like you were in really good conditions, though, right? You weren't on, like, some you, hostile floor. <laughs> dude, you're so right, man. Like, I've been sick in hostels before, and they're, they're, that is, like, one of... That has to be, like, one of the seven layers of hell. Like, that is 
fucking miserable like mm. being in a fucking dorm room puking your guts like that is just the worst but no i was like i mentioned like they have a compound and everything and they gave me like my own house and what? so i had like dude i'm telling you bro i've not experienced this <laughs> level of wealth in my life like it made me feel uncomfortable honestly <laughs> like this the clothes that i'm like... wearing they like they gave me these clothes like they have another outfit they gave me also what yeah yeah this is like traditional that's gnarly dude traditional yeah, like give us a 360 pakistani it's got, got the little it's called a shavar kamis see what i mean can you see is that too close yeah dude that's a yeah cape. that's some calvin klein shit yeah dude it's lit but Holy yeah shit. really generous people and they let me stay in this fucking house and they gave me like two servants and like they're watching over me all night like i'm puking and like <laughs> servants dude, dude i'm telling you bro like it's i've never experienced anything like this man <laughs> so i'm like puking my guts out like i can't keep water down were, were like, they there like beyond their will or like were they going home after their shift oh dude no no no, they, dude they live there like he has a house and then behind his house, they have another house for like the servants and like a, like a cage. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he pays is them. It, is, it, is the house like, almost as nice as the other one? I don't know. I'm I didn't just go making in. Making sure it. that these people are okay. We can't fraternize with with the other with the lower <laughs> caste, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> It's like in the Titanic, you guys are in the fucking bottom, dude. Right. Did you see I'm going to wear it? You, th you think I would talk to those people? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No eye contact. <laughs> right? yeah. No, it's crazy, though, dude. Like, I was telling some of my friends earlier, like, it's, it's, I've never experienced anything like it, man. Like, you know, I'm in the U.S., like, you know, I, I, we have our issues, like, in the West and everything with, like, race issues and everything. And I've kind of become jaded to all that. I'm just like, oh, okay, like relax. Like it's not that bad. And then I come here and it's like real, dude. Like there's a true separation between people. And I just get this treatment just because I happen to be white. You know what I mean? It's like, fuck, dude. I almost felt guilty where I'm like, I didn't earn any of this shit. Like I'm just a tourist here. And like, you're just treating mm -hmm. me like royalty for nothing. And I mean, I'm really grateful. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's fucking sweet. It's like a cool life experience, but I don't know. I just walked away from it feeling like, ugh, like a little weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so how did you, how did you leave? I guess I thought it was like hotel California where you just can't leave. <laughs> um, like, this is my well, white person now. <laughs> dude, that's another thing, bro. Like it's, uh, they're very insistent. Like they're very hospitable people over here, but they're very like, They'll just kind of make plans for you so like i don't know it's weird like i was hanging out with this guy yesterday and like at this big celebration like big, big prayer thing and like by the way plug if you're interested if your listeners are interested in that uh, i'm gonna be posting a video on that but so we're like at this fucking big celebration and then i'm just like hey man like i have someone to meet at six and he's like yeah yeah sure six whatever and then he's like can you just tell him eight or tell him nine or whatever and but they do that. Like you'll be with person A and then be texting person B and you're like, hey man, person B wants to meet at six. And like, they just, they're always like, oh, just tell them later, 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 later. Like they're very much like, oh no, I just want you to stay and like enjoy this. And they enjoy, it's, it's they like enjoy a weird, your company then. No, it's, it's great, man. It's, it's great. It's just, it can be a lot. You know what I mean? Like, especially it puts me in an uncomfortable situation where I have to like balance all these people. You know what I mean? Um, mm. I don't know. I sound like a ungrateful prick right now but it's just uh i don't know you only gave me two it's, it's servants like, it's i really wanted great. three <laughs> uh no i mean at the end of the day it's great but it's just i don't know it, it's just so different like in the west i think we value like more privacy and like um, yeah if, if you're a guest uh, at someone's home they're just gonna be like hey here's the guest house you know do whatever you need to do if you need me i'm kind of here suppers at six type thing right yeah 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 where it's yeah over here it's just like like you'll wake up and be like, all right, I guess we have no plans today. You'll like start working, whatever. And then he texts you and you're like, he's like, Hey man, we have an event tonight at six. Like, like, please come. I'm like, fuck. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, I don't know. I feel weird. I feel like a dick right now. I feel like I'm complaining a lot, but I mean, I really am grateful. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been like a very different experience that I'm used to, you know, like, dude, imagine if you went to like 
like fucking Norway or something and you knew someone they're like, okay, I'd yeah, sleep on the couch and like, whatever, serve yourself. You fucking bastard. But then over here, they're like, treat you like <laughs> royalty. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess, I guess, man, I, I think uh, Pakistan's heating up in terms of uh, backpackers going there. Like there seems to be a lot more people interested in going, you know, you see more YouTubers going. Was yeah, there a lot of other sure. like foreigners or Westerners? Dude, honestly, I haven't seen a single one. Um, but I mean, to be fair, I've been like really? with locals and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did like a tour. I did like a cheesy kind of like bus tour. And there were f- tourists there, but I wouldn't say they were foreigners. I'm pretty sure they were Pakistani. Um, okay. And would you say it's a, a, a safe place? Oh, yeah. So, no, it's totally fine. I feel fine. I mean, honestly, it's like. Dude, the places that the people tell me to avoid, like Iraq, um, Pakistan, were like the number. Which you went to, you know, what, dude, and they've been the best people. Like I felt totally fine. They don't let you spend money. I mean, it's dude, it's crazy. I mean, I'm not exaggerating, dude. I haven't spent money in nine days. Like, like there's another video I'm gonna post. I was out in this it's market, and I start the video and I ask someone, "Hey, where's an ATM? I want some Pakistani money." Because I hadn't spent money in four days. It was like a goal to spend money. And I'm like, hey, where's the ATM? And they're like, no, 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 no ATM, no ATM. Come to my shop, have a tea, have some street food. No ATM. I'm not going to show you where it is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's unreal, man. Uh, you're you're yeah, really yeah. selling it to be, like, to be honest, you're, you're, you're really selling it. I, I'm in, really intrigued by Pakistan now. It's sweet, dude. It's, uh, the people are like, I know it used to be the same country as India and like, I just feel like the people are on another level here as far as hospitality. And to be fair, I was only, I only went to North India, but, um, here is insane. Dude. Like they'll just whisk you away. Like I try to, I'm like, Hey man, like, where's a good hotel? I'm like, no hotel. You just staying with me, buddy. <laughs> Please don't be a shithole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but no. So, so, so we briefly touched on Iraq and I want to kind of table that topic because you were there with a fellow YouTuber, your boy Seal, mm. and mm. just—I I guess I'm just uh, um, promoting this next episode that we're going to be bringing both on, and we're going to be discussing Iraq in a future episode. Dude, we got a crazy ass story from Iraq too. We got a crazy. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, staying on the subject of Christmas, what are you, what are you doing for Christmas? Are you going back home? Or are you doing? Uh, yeah, Pakistan? I'm going to be flying home. I'm going to be flying home uh, in nine days. Yeah. That is if I don't convert to Islam first. Well, <laughs> oh, there's still time. <laughs> yeah. There are some powerful people, so. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. But so yeah. on the subject of Christmas, and this being the Christmas episode, I've, I've got to make a confession to you, Connor. I've actually never had eggnog. You bastard. I've always thought that it was like, if you look at eggnog, it looks like a fucking omelet. And I was just like, it tastes like eggs. It does have the egg name in it. Like, so, I know that's, that's what kept me away from it. I was like, I like <laughs> eggs, but not raw ones. Like I'm not Rocky over here. Like Christmas Rocky. <laughs> right. right, right. <laughs> so, so I'm going to be doing a, here I have my little cup of nog and oh. I'm going to be doing a nog review. The Ferg, first ever nog review. Oh, One step, everybody knows. History the in the making. <laughs> Got some ASMR action. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I don't think I could drink a lot of those, but that's that's like dangerous. That's like uh, very sweet. Yeah, yeah, that's dangerous. But it's good. I like it. Is it boozy? Boozy eggnog. Yeah, yeah, it's a whiskey. All right, I put I put bourbon, bourbon in it. Oh, class act. Hey, very nice. I mean, I I knew you were coming on, so I had to impress. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, eggnog's uh, good, dude. It's, you, you can only drink like two or three, and then you're just fucking lit. And then the next day is, I mean, you can taste it. It's like syrup. It's, it's so like sweet. syrup. Yeah. The yeah. sugar is usually what gives you a hangover, right? So, yeah, for yeah. sure. That's uh, that's a rough one. A little in the next day, uh, since 
yeah. you're on and you're a YouTuber, I just like to make a plug, I guess, for my YouTube channel. Uh, since you've come on, I guess uh, YouTube channel's grown, and uh, I want to start a new segment where I'm uh, highlighting a new subscriber of the week. So I'm just gonna throw mm -hmm. the new subscribers in a randomizer here. Okay. The winner this week for subscriber of the week is Patty McBee. Congratulations, <laughs> Patty McBee. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. <laughs> That's my mom. Oh my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is so funny, dude. I thought you were actually putting it in. I was like, oh, this is cool. I want to ask him about this, like this tech that he has. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, so she's so she's a big supporter of your videos and uh other videos. Dude, she was my first subscriber. That you go. Oh she's no my way! First subscriber. Shout out my mom. Yeah, much love to to Patty. Yeah. Yeah. What what is she doing for Christmas? Uh, picking me up from the airport. I hope. <laughs> I don't know. We're very Do much like, any, like uh, Christmas traditions. Mm, no, not really. I mean, we're we're like a very like last minute family. Like, if you watch any of my videos, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm. I don't plan shit. I don't plan anything. And that very much I've inherited that from my family um, for better or worse. But I just really know, never know what we're going to do. Sometimes we look at lights. Sometimes we drink bourbon. Fucking. We, I mean, yeah, just basic on that nog. suburban shit. Yeah, yeah. Bring some nog, dude. Yeah, for sure. Get some Evan Williams eggnog. They serve it in like the, the glass bottle. It's real, real classy. You'd love it. Oh, you guys can get eggnog with with alcohol in it already oh yeah we're free phil we're free not like you <laughs> socialists up there <laughs> <laughs> yeah listen yeah maybe the uh, evan williams truck gets uh, stuck in the the snow once it hits the border who knows <laughs> <laughs> yeah or we drink too much it. evan william will evan williams eggnog and we drunk drive and can never enter canada again it happens, goddamn. Criminals. Did you know that was a thing? If you have any DUIs, you can never go to Canada. Uh, I think it's similar for us. I've had. I don't really? know if we get banned. I I know someone who has had a DUI and he had a hard time getting in. So. Oh, but they let him in. I yeah, I mm. think so. But yeah, you guys just completely get banned. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Because I've heard stories about people with just like one DUI, like no criminal record, they get one DUI and they can't go to Canada. Well, it's because your alcohol is watered down and then you guys come up and you say, well, I have two beers, you know, and then you're just shittered and you're hitting into every street car that there is. <laughs> Wait, are, 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 is your alcohol stronger? That's, that's the joke, yeah. Oh. I, I don't know if it actually is, but I guess it's maybe because uh. less of our beers, like light beers and stuff, like we have them, but. All right. I don't know. We'll we'll, right, we'll, right. we'll test it one day. No, no. no. I was gonna say, fucking. Uh, when I was with Nolan, uh, see you on tour. Um, we were in Istanbul and we were trying to plan a trip to India, actually. And it turns out, can't Canadians can't go to India? Like, period. Really? They cannot go to India. That's... Yeah, because of COVID stuff. That's like, really weird. Canada was so strict. Apparently, Canada was really strict with Indians coming in. So then India was like, all right, fuck all y'all. No Canadians. So now you can't go. That's, that's, that's interesting. I, I know that we have like, I don't know if it's like not, not necessarily a program, but I know that India has the largest middle class in the world. Or not middle class, but like um, people from like 20 to 30. And okay. because of that, I think Canada had an agreement with India to kind of fast track people becoming citizens. Mm. But yeah, no, that's interesting. I I didn't I didn't know that. That's something to look into. Yeah, it's a real well, bummer, and especially India seems like just like a stock, like not like a crazy place to travel. You'd like you'd imagine it'd be like relatively easy. Like to me, the E visa took like two hours, and Nolan was applying. He's like, "Dude, Canada's not on the list of countries. What the fuck?" <laughs> Yeah, that sucks, so, man. So you guys had to split bummer, up, dude. Yeah, 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 we did. We little cheeky breakup. So, Connor, I just want to, I guess, start back to where we kind of left you off. You were in Ukraine. You were in Lviv, if I if I remember correctly. And yeah. can you maybe fill in 
to the listeners who didn't follow your your or subscribe your YouTube channel, which they should, uh, to kind of get to. Can, can you fill us in on that time that we've we've missed from you have uh, from you? Yeah, I fucking was in Lviv, and then I I had my motorcycle, and then I rode the motorcycle to Kiev, uh, and then from there I went was south. Kiev a lot more dangerous than Lviv. Uh, yeah, I mean it had been hit pretty hard back in March of 2022, April, I think. And then obviously more recently, like late September, no, October 10th, I think it was that they got a lot of bombs from Russia. Um, yeah, I mean, dude, like just riding the motorcycle on the streets, like you see regular scenery on a highway and then you'll see like a burned out building, like a bombed factory. Um, you know, I went to Irpin, which is a suburb north of Kiev, and there was like fully destroyed apartment complexes. People's homes had been ransacked. I mean, I went to like where Russia held a base, like they controlled Irpin for a minute. And so I went to where that was and, you know, just flattened homes, like, you know, daycares, like schools burned and it was really fucked up to see actually like i know war is like very complicated and i'm not really educated on what's going on but it was just fucked up seeing like people's apartments burned out like damn dude like did they really have to do that and then meanwhile people are still living in the apartment complexes like you know 5a and then 5c like apartment 5a 5c for example would be burned out and then someone's living in 5b it's just like i'm just not used to seeing that jesus um and then you know like dude there's like it's not like a fucking it's not like they have factories up there and stuff it's just like it's a suburb dude like it's there's like kids running around and like playgrounds and shit and like it was just heavy dude it was heavy yeah so i fucking left kiev and it actually took me a while to leave ukraine dude it was tough man um you know number one i had the motorcycle and the weather was getting really iffy like really cold rain like on the bike it's just fucking it's intense man like the eastern european weather was like coming in and actually in one of my videos it's called um fleeing ukraine during war i actually encountered like something really strange and i wonder if your your listeners could help me it was i was trying to enter a town in ukraine and there was a police checkpoint and i'm like okay yeah country at war that's you know par for the course i'm not surprised by this and I pull up and they're like, where are you from? I said, USA. And they're like, are you Jewish? And I was like, no. And they're like, are you Christian? And I was like, sure, yeah, I'm Christian. And they like talked amongst themselves for a while. And then I, meanwhile, I'm like looking over and there's like a big tour bus and like vans full of um, Hasidic Jews. And they're like, sorry, you're not Jewish. You can't come to this town. And I was like, the fuck? So I just turned around like very bamboozled. <laughs> like I had no idea what was going on. Uh, it's all in the video. So if, you're, if your listeners want to help me out, I, I have no clue what that was about. But I had to like reroute and like find a different hotel. And it was like this whole thing. And you said that that was in Ukraine? <laughs> yeah. Like near the Moldovan border. Right? Yeah, it's weird. I've never, it's weird. I... <laughs> That's, yeah, listen, I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe you just didn't yeah, like your flow. But... <laughs> I don't know, dude. Uh, but I fucking, yeah, finally made it out of Ukraine. It took me forever. And then went to Moldova, went to Transnistria, like technically nice. a country that doesn't exist. It's not recognized by any other country except for like other former Soviet states that think their country. So it's like amongst weird company and went there. And dude, Eastern European, Eastern Europe, Maybe maybe I just had bad luck, dude, but I had a lot of difficulty traveling there. Like, could not find a fucking hotel room in Transnistria. Like, I went to one town, and they're like, oh, oh, wait, fuck, did I miss? Dude, leaving Ukraine was, like, a whole other thing. You should just watch the video. It's fucking insane. Like, I get lost, and, like, the bike breaks down, and I run out of gas, and, like, I can't find hotels, and... I go to a wrong border crossing and it was like a whole, it was a fiasco, dude. The fucking Jewish town. Like, anyways. <laughs> um, 
And then I, so I finally left and then I went to Transistria. The same shit happened, dude. I couldn't find a hotel. Like I went to one town and I was like, hey, do you guys have hotels? And they looked at me like I was insane. Like hotels? Like why would you stay here? (laughs) And and they're they're like, go to this town an hour away. I was like, okay, an hour, fine. And went there and same thing happened, dude. Like no hotels. And what ended up happening was I ask a taxi driver, I'm like, just take me to a hotel, dude. And he's like, dude, there's no hotels, but you can stay at my house. Like, I'm working all night. I'm doing the night shift. Is he Pakistani? (laughs) No, Transistrian, man. (laughs) Uh, Transistrian royalty. No, no, no. But (laughs) fucking, it was crazy. He was like working all night. He's like, yeah, here's the keys. Here's the Wi-Fi. Just like make yourself at home. And I just had an apartment to myself all night. And I woke up, he took me to breakfast. It was like, you can't write this shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. Um, That's wild. And dude. then f- fucking from Transnistria, went to Romania, Bulgaria. Uh, have you been to Bulgaria? Nope. Okay. I know somebody called Sophia experience. though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sophia's all right. I don't know. I mean... <laughs> I have, like, mixed feelings about Bulgaria. I didn't feel like people were that friendly there, honestly. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But um, I went to, like, a gypsy town. That was oh, Those are the friendliest people I met in Bulgaria. This, like, town that pe- these people told me was super dangerous. In Stara Zagora, it's like a gypsy village in the hills. And people were nice. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 watched, I watched this video. Oh, thanks. Yeah. No, I, I loved it there. Um, those people were great. But... Anyways, um, and then I left. Oh, I sold the motorcycle in Bulgaria. Big news. Fucking sold failed the, the mission. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that sucks, man. Fucking failed. But I mean, yeah. if it keeps you going and finishes your 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 journey from uh, Ireland to uh, Japan, I think fuck, you, you gotta you gotta survive, right? You gotta do it. Yeah, and then, honestly, bro, at the end of the day, like it's all about just getting there. So if I need to get rid of things in order to afford it, like that's fine. Basically, long story short, you need all these documents to enter with the bike in Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, India. It's like a fuck ton of money that I just did not have. So I was like, all right, I might as well just sell it. So made a quick just get a, a moped once and, you get somewhere and just k- keep going. Dude, that's not a bad idea. I got the whole moto vlog set up. Wouldn't that be fucking hilarious? Like a moto vlog from like a little tuk tuk in fucking Vietnam or something, <laughs> dude. I- well, dude, like Vietnam's like, like, like you said, Vietnam is, is such a, it's a well-known place for people doing moped, like doing like the Hajang loop. I, th- I think yeah, you should yeah, do it yeah. or consider at least. Yeah. I yeah. know. I'll definitely rent one at some point. I mean, even in India, you can get like nice motorcycles for like $20 a day. So I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be posting something one of these days. Yeah. Just don't leave your credit card and don't come back. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, but fucking so after let me let me see like bulgaria i went to turkey went spent three weeks in istanbul that's where i met nolan we had some hijinks Mm. there and then we flew to baghdad iraq uh we're there for eight days had an amazing time uh had a very strange experience i'm excited to for the next episode i really want to tell you about it i'm reserving all questions (laughs) uh and then fuck flew flew to delhi and then took a train up into pakistan and now now i'm here nice so along your travels i guess maybe what's one country i think we talked about pakistan being like uh definitely like holy shit like i I haven't paid for anything yet here but is there another country that you're like oh man like this blew away my expectations dude iraq iraq 100 percent. okay i know like okay fuck i'll I'll stop asking about it Honestly, it was it was incredible. Like it was the same shit. Like we couldn't pay for things. Um, one thing I will say about Iraq is things were more expensive there than I thought they were going to be. Like hotels were not cheap, and uh, but it was funny. Like Nolan said it in one of his videos. He's like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't even know how much many things are here. Like food, for example. I don't know how much the food costs here because we can't pay for it. So, like, it. I mean, once you pay for the hotel, which is a bit pricey, like you're good. So, I got no complaints, man." Loved Iraq. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So listen, I want to touch on a few things that happened in Istanbul. Because I, I did watch those videos, videos as well. And mm. 
I saw one of the videos you went down into this like I don't know if like it was like an underground market or if it was like near like a metro or something, but you went underground and then there was just a bunch of guns. And it was so funny because your reaction in that video, it just felt like you were home. <laughs> You're like, oh, I have that one at home. I have that one at home. That's so cool, man. I love uh, it's like seeing all your action AR-15 figures like, or whatever. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got to catch them all, baby. Right. <laughs> nah, that was hilarious. I, like, can you like, can, like like people just like were they real guns? Like, you can buy guns in Istanbul. I don't know. I mean, someone commented and they were like, they must be replicas because real guns are fake, but they look fucking real to me, dude. Like Desert Eagles and like MP5s and like they're selling magazines and shit. I mean, I don't know, bro. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to like put anybody out of business or get anybody imprisoned, but I don't know. Look real to me, dude. And who the fuck? Well, yeah, why would I mean- you buy like a. I mean, they weren't BB guns, you know what I mean? Like maybe they're like three D printed guns, or uh, like I, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, like everything in there was like it was like a counterfeit market, so like they could be knockoff guns. Like they looked real, but uh, maybe they were like fake Desert Eagle or like fake Glocks or you know whatever. Maybe they just have like really realistic Nerf guns there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, appealing to but an I older think, demographic. Yeah, and, but I think also like the guy's reaction when you when you were on when you were videoing him, he was just like, "Oh, like." I yeah, think that yeah, might yeah. might be our uh, our sign that they might have been real. Yeah, but, yeah, because I when I, I walked in with the camera and like the whole store just kind of got quiet. It was like, "Oh, like this is very like palpably uncomfortable." And he didn't speak any English, but then he was like, "Problem, leave." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Message received." Loud and clear, bud. <laughs> My bad, dude. <laughs> yeah. But so- something else interesting happened while you were in Istanbul. There was a terrorist attack. Mm. Uh, I saw footage of the video, and it was like somebody in a crowded space blew themselves up. How was that? Yeah. So I think um, what actually happened was it was a woman. They think she was from Syria. They think she was like a Kurdish terrorist because they have a lot of beef like kurdistan and the surrounding countries and yeah uh, so anyways i don't want to get into like the politics of it but like i think she had like a backpack and she set it down on a bench and then walked away and like a few minutes later it just exploded and then this this area was like really crowded like if you've been to istanbul it's like in the taksim square and like there's this huge kind of posh shopping area that you know one of those areas you have to go to so like very international scene and jammed with people dude and i think they killed like eight people and they injured dozens and um i actually was just like sitting out in my hostel working and um i get a text and my friend is like hey are you okay i'm like what do you mean and she's like she's like like look uh, turn on the news you know like uh there's a huge bombing in istanbul and i look out my window and people are running in the streets. There's cop cars. There's helicopters. I mean, it had happened like 20 minutes before that. So um, people were just still like, like, "Fuck that!" Fresh. I'm gonna get getting the fuck out of here. Yeah, dude, it was intense, man. Um, like the, the streets were just clearing out, and like I said, it's always like jammed with people, and it was it was pretty empty, and it was just it was just scary. Dude. I mean, it literally happened like pff, like a five minute walk from my hostel. So it was one of those things. Especially, we had just gotten back from Iraq, too. Like, this place that everyone everyone says is super dangerous, blah, 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 don't go there. We felt fine. And then I come back to Istanbul, like, a big tourist area, and it's like, fuck, dude, like, that could have been me. Like, I went to these restaurants a few days ago, and fuck, dude. Puts it into perspective. Wrong place, wrong time. Like, just, yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah. Did Was, was Patty, Patty freaking out? No, because I fucking, I always get in front of it. Like, if something bad happens, I'm always just like, all right, I got to text mom because she's going to fucking read about this. Like, you make sure she's, you know, relaxed about it and make sure I'm okay and everything. Like, she has the the find my friends on my iPhone all the time. Like, she's always, like, tracking me and stuff. Like, she's very kind of paranoid about what I'm up to. So, I had to let her know. He's moving, I so we're good. Her. I was like, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's that's a good tip to have, you know. Get if there's a major thing that happens that your parents are gonna find out on the news in the city that you're in, maybe t- 
talk to them first so that they don't think you're fucking dead. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Like reach out first, like extend the hand. You know what I mean? Like, and my mom didn't answer the, the phone the first three times. I was like, fuck, like if I actually needed something, I like, come on, Patty, like, let's go. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, turned out all right. How were the next days after the terrorist attack? Did you did you find that people were a little skittish walking around Istanbul? Uh, I don't know. The feeling in the street wasn't so bad. I mean, I think people moved on fast. But me personally, I was fucking shaken up, dude. I was like, damn, like, let's book a flight out of here, dude. Like, fuck this. Like, I don't know. I have this theory, man. I've, I've expressed this in videos before. Like, like I got robbed in Colombia, right? I got robbed in a yeah. place that was extremely touristy like it's a place that everyone thinks is safe but like because people know there's going to be people there and dumb tourists they know they can take advantage of you and everything and and so that those places just give me the creeps now dude like taj mahal like fuck that like petra jordan fuck that like i'm good dude I'll, i'm much happier like being i don't know in a rice paddy or something like because i truly do think you're safer there you know, and it's more interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think, I think I'd still do Petra, but yeah, I, I, I know what you mean with the, the other wonders of the world. That some of them can maybe yeah. be a little sketchy. Well, no, it's not like I'm saying don't go. It's just like I don't know. My, don't like, go to Rome. Kind of just <laughs> what? Don't go to Rome, man. The Colosseum. <laughs> yeah, it fucking stinks <laughs> there, dude. <laughs> Rum smells so bad. <laughs> <laughs> um but i mean i don't know it's just like i mean i'm still gonna go to those places you know what i mean but it's just like i kind of see the writing on the walls like if anything bad is gonna happen it's gonna be in those areas did you ever see that so. video of the guy who um there was like a youtuber or something like set out set up outside like just on the street recording and th he was talking about this guy and he's like, do you, do you have any life hacks or something? He's like, yeah, go to places after there's been a terrorist attack. It's cheap as hell. <laughs> yeah, this is a legend, dude. I saw that TikTok. That's hilarious. <laughs> he was old, too. He had been I, to a lot of places. <laughs> yeah, like he, he had seen some shit, like after some shit happened. <laughs> yeah, fuck. Dude. What a guy. Yeah, it's not the answer. Yeah. They're they're expecting like you know, love your neighbor and like fucking pray five times a day. Or whatever. He's like, yeah, fucking hop on a plane to Afghanistan. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> what a legend, uh, Connor. Yeah. There, there's something else. I guess I, I I wanted to talk to you a bit more about in the last time that mm -hmm. you were on, but I knew that I was going to be doing this activity, and I guess I reserved some of my questions for the, our time now. Uh, I want okay. to talk about your time with ayahuasca. Oh, okay. Where did it happen? Okay. Where did you do it? Colombia. Nice. Medellin. Can can you mm. in in Medellin? Santa Elena. It's like north. It's like in the mountains above the city. Okay. And yeah. yeah, so maybe maybe give us a little little overview of your experience and uh, the things you learned. I don't want to put people off of it, but I had like a very intense well i mean every time i drink it it's intense but the first time was like heavy bro like like i drank one cup you know like i did the cleanse and everything like i did the vegan thing like a week before you're supposed to eat real healthy and like avoid coffee and everything yep. no sex no alcohol no caffeine so i was like going into it like because that that kind of prepares you to like all right like this is serious like i'm gonna go into it for healing and like it's a medicine you respect it and then, so the night of, you know, drink the cup and it's like, I don't know how yours was, but it was like slime, dude. It was like so thick. Like it's, you can feel it's it. It's like, like thick dirt. Just go to, yeah. Mine tasted like cough medicine, like thick Robitussin. Like maybe that's mucus. what it was. Like it's like drinking fucking mucus. Were you drinking lean? Hold <laughs> <laughs> up in the hut, dude. <laughs> Pull up with the shaman. Is that little Wayne? <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right. But uh yeah, I drank the first cup and you know, I've I've done psychedelics plenty of times. So it was like classic feelings of love and connectedness and more of what I'm used to. 
And then I threw up, like, I don't know, I wasn't keeping a timer, but it was like shortly after. And, and they told, they told me like, oh, if you throw up and you're, you're not feeling the effects, like drink another cup. And so the effects kind of wore off and I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's go for another cup. So I got up, drink the second cup. And like right after I drank it, I was like, I think I fucked up. I think I'm like playing with fire right now. This is Uh like top two psychedelics in the world. And I just drank two cups my first time. And I felt like severe anxiety. Like I was very scared for what was about to happen. And, um, damn, I'm getting scared just thinking about it, dude. I was fucking shit in my pants. <laughs> what, what was the experience like? So, it, you know, I, I, I don't know if it was the same as for you, but for me, it, like, started to get a little sweaty. You know, you, you vomit a bit. There's, I was listening to a video of a guy recently on Joe Rogan. It was uh, Neil Brennan talking about his experience. And he, t- he said something mm-hmm. about his experience. And I was like, oh, fuck, yes, that definitely happened to me. But, like, words in my head started... He was like, uh, the word what came into his head. And then he heard like, what, 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 what. And I was like, that definitely happened to me. Did that, what, what, what was the initial, the initial, uh, experience for you? Well, like I said, the first cup was like feelings of love and connectedness. And like, um, the other times I drank it, I did have auditory hallucinations, like, but they were kind of like. Man, it's really hard to put it into words, but they were almost like energetic, like it was like Mother Yahe, like the spirit of the universe, like this female spirit that most people talk about. She was like soothing me like a mother. And it wasn't like concrete, like relax. Or it wasn't like English. It was just like energetic, like communication. Mm. But I heard it. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, um, it makes complete sense. I Yeah. I understand. Yeah, yeah I'm glad because I mean it's 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 hard talking about this shit if you haven't done it. Every time I express this stuff, I just feel like a crazy person, dude. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Me uh, too. I uh, I literally like I I've told some friends and I, I've seen their faces and they're like, yeah, "But you're good now." <laughs> like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like <laughs> yeah dude. It was like, just an experience. Fuck, you see a lot of weird God. shit. But it makes you, I think, for the better in the end. 100%. I mean, it's Madison. 100%. So uh, for you, in your experience, did you have a lot of visual? So like, were your eyes open while you were tripping? And were you seeing stuff? Or is it when you close your eyes, the shit happened in your bro, head? Bro, uh, so the first time I drank it, my eyes were closed the entire time. Like, I didn't have any visual. So uh, Basically, after I drank that second cup, I was feeling really anxious. And I already suffer from, you know, generalized anxiety disorder, which I'm sure a lot of people do. But so I was already feeling really paranoid. And then I drank the second cup and I laid down. I was like trying to calm myself down. And I think the first cup was like still kicking in. It was like the classic, like eating two edibles situation where like, you know. Um, yeah. Funny thing. I actually, the same thing happened when I, when I took acid the first time. I took two tabs, but... That's another story. <laughs> but um, um, So then I was feeling really anxious, whatever. And then like the feelings are getting stronger, stronger, stronger. I'm getting more anxious and more dark. And like, and I'm just seeing pure darkness, like just dark, pure darkness. Um, and like, you know, a lot of people say like the spirit of ayahuasca will come to you in the form of a woman. And that's happened to me and it's been beautiful before and it's been terrifying other times and this was terrifying like she was like a little demon like a cartoon demon like a little devil and like a goth chick she, no <laughs> no dude it was like uh you know the skateboard company toy machine it's like whatever yeah. it's just like a cartoonish little devil like classic looking but it was black and and she was like racist she was like come here come here come here like come down here and i was like what no 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 but that's scary and that's dark and i don't know what's down there and she's like just come here and uh i was like okay and i would kind of follow her and she's like no 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 deeper 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 like come down here like further she was like flirty like flirtatious like come on like follow me 
And I was like, oh, I don't like this. Like, this is scary. This is dark. And I would like call the shaman over like, please, I'm seeing. And how I was able to speak Spanish during this moment is like a crowning achievement <laughs> of my life. <laughs> but I was telling him, Fuck. like, you know, I'm seeing darkness and like, I'm scared. And, and he's like, no, you have to follow it. Like, see where it goes. And I was like, dude, that is not what I want to hear right now. <laughs> But okay, fuck it, let's go. And I would follow her. And this is all just happening mentally. I would kind of follow her a few steps. And she's like, no, no, no. Like, we, there's more to see. There's like, there's, there's darker things you need to see. And I was like, fuck. And it was just mental anguish for hours, dude. It was so hard, man. Um, and it wasn't even like grounded in like reality. It wasn't like, oh, you were mean to this person and you should feel bad. Like, a lot of times psychedelics will show you like yeah like a lot of times they'll teach you a lesson about life but this was very like bigger picture like just darkness pure darkness like unrelated to anything and yeah dude it, it felt like like the strongest force in the universe mother nature like the thing that will ultimately kill you was like just beating the fuck out of me for hours dude it was so grueling like it was one of the hardest things and and slowly like i would come out of it i'm like oh man like oh that was so hard but i'm, I'm so glad it's over and then she'd be like no 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 no, come back and she would like beat oh, the fuck shit. out of me dude and it was just like i was being just fucking tortured it was so hard dude on the ropes but, just trying to dodge the punches yeah, and I, like I was trying to dodge it for a while, man. But then at the end, I was just like, "Fuck it!" Like I guess I need to see this because like the shaman kept saying, "Like you're gonna see what you need to see," and so I was like, "Fuck, dude! I guess I need to deal with this." So, um, it was just so difficult. And then so I was like slowly coming out of it, and I just felt like strong as fuck, dude. I was like, "Oh man, like I can handle this. Like I can handle." fucking anything i like took my shirt off and i was like screaming and i was like throwing shit all over the room like dude i was like lit i was like oh my god like i'm alive and i was like touching my face like like wow i'm like a living creature like i'm fucking alive i'm not dead like i have a life that i'm supposed to enjoy like i've seen how Were bad you just like making other people bad trip this fucking guy's crazy dude it's funny you say that because all the like we slept on the floor like we had little sleeping bags on the floor and it was like really cramped in this little hut and i was just like flailing around like taking my clothes off and shit throwing stuff and i was like knocking into people dude and they were just like i think they were sleeping because like most people had like finished their experience but i was like still on that second cup dude so <laughs> two cup gang <laughs> gang gang <laughs> double cup pull up <laughs> holy shit dude that's yeah, wild, but, but I, no, I, 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 I understand the feeling of you know you, you go through that and you're like fuck, like you can do fucking anything, dude. Yeah, but I, I don't want to like you know dissuade your listeners from doing it. Like if it's something that people have thought about doing, I, th I encourage them to do it. But I came out of it like so confident, dude. I was a new man after that. I felt like I had just survived the gauntlet. I was like, I can do fucking anything, dude. Like anxiety. You know, I still have anxiety, but it was, like, very diminished. Like, in social situations, like, I would get this kind of, like, tingling or, like, tightness in my chest or my stomach or my feet or whatever. It would, like, physically manifest. And the month, two months, three months after that, it was just, like, it just wasn't there. It had just disappeared. You know what I mean? So it's, it really is medicine, man. And, you know, I had to go through it. Like, I had to fucking earn it. But if you think about it, it's, like, four hours of in that situation it was pretty gruesome but for like months years of of healing so i mean i'm, I'm actually exactly. trying to do it again dude it's uh, my my description of it was forced therapy mm. would you agree yeah yeah I, I don't like the word forced i mean i guess maybe your first time because you're fighting it right but um yeah it, i mean it's true it's very much like showing you something it's not like acid or like mushrooms where it's like it can be like recreational like ayahuasca is very much like educational like all right sit down like you have a lesson to learn right now you know yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a strict it's, it's a strict teacher 
<laughs> yes, it. Yeah, it, it's it's hard to hard to describe. So I appreciate you uh, ex- ex- sharing this because I I know how hard it is to describe without sounding like a crazy person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was. I feel like that one because each time I drink it, I go deeper. Right? It's like a reverse tolerance. So like the second and third time, I that's when I'm like, wait, am I schizophrenic now? Like <laughs> I have some. <laughs> I can talk to aliens? What? I can travel interdimensionally? <laughs> yeah. But like, so the second yeah. time, did, 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 were you able to see like hallucinations? Oh, yeah. Second, second and third time were much more tolerable. Like the second time I went into it, I think it was like a month later that I drank it again. And um, yeah, I mean, like let that be a lesson to your listeners. Like I fucking did it like a month after I was like, okay, like I actually learned a lot. It wasn't all bad. Like I actually am a, like a much stronger man because of this medicine. I'm going to do it again. And I went into it like expecting to like pay the toll again, so to speak, you know? And I went into it expecting to like get fucked basically. And it was totally not that dude. Like only took one cup this time. Um, and like the medicine appeared to me uh like uh like a blonde girl in a white dress and like the sun setting behind her and we're in a field of flowers and she's like beckoning me like come on come here come here whereas last time it was like a little demon like come here but this time it's like this pretty blonde girl like come on let's dance in the field of flowers i'm like oh this is amazing this is so beautiful <laughs> And uh, second time I didn't throw up for a long time. So like the DMT was like really working its magic on me and uh, very intense. Like uh, basically I could feel it like splitting me apart. Like I felt like my body was like atomizing, like all the molecules were just like ripping apart. And I was just like dissolving and just dying basically like it felt like my body was like being split in half right and oh. <laughs> your, your face right now dude <laughs> uh, so yeah i was like splitting in half atomizing and then i felt this like and each time i drink the medicine i get this like really strong tingling in my fingers and stuff and i well, it's something that i used to associate with having anxiety like i get a panic attack i get like really tingly extremities and um the same thing happened i was like oh fuck i'm having an anxiety attack like this sucks i need to fight this like i don't want to have an anxiety attack whatever and this vibration like moved through my body and came up to my third eye and this is where it gets weird bro this is where you might think let's go i am schizophrenic (laughs) okay so uh the vibration like moved to my third eye like right here and i could hear this auditory buzzing like it was a metallic vibration like and i I got that that, oh okay yeah it was through the sound of crickets the crickets were were like you know we were in the jungle and then it just like doubled tripled and quadrupled and it was just a vibration at the end yo did you feel it in your body or was it just like you could just hear oh yeah oh yeah it was like you felt like you're fucking vibrating fuck powerful man but so like i hear it i feel it and i'm feeling this for a while and i'm just like oh i guess i'm having anxiety whatever whatever but actually i was so fucking gone on the medicine i didn't i couldn't even like perceive whether this was a good or a bad thing like I was just purely feeling like people that meditate for a long time, they'll tell you like, Oh, I'm able to like process things as they are. I'm not, I, I can process things and not judge them. And that was happening, but just like through pure like pain and like just being gone on the medicine, dude. And anyways, so this, this vibration, this certain frequency, it changed. Right. And instead of like a bzz, it was like a bzz, like it kind of it's like if you're watching like a sci-fi movie or something and like someone has like an out of body ex- fuck no that's not it's so hard to explain dude um 
basically like the tone of the vibration changed. It became like otherworldly, like almost like UFO type sound. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And so when that happened, I like passed through into another dimension where I was communicating with ancient aliens telepathically. Okay. And that happened to me too. No. Did you see the aliens? Really? Did, did you Wait, see really? the aliens? Yeah, yeah I, I communicated with something. No I fucking couldn't see way. Them. Okay. I could, I could not crazy. see them. So, no, no. So my buddy okay. who did it as well, he also communicated with, with uh, something. He couldn't see them either. But for him, it was not a conversation back and forth. It was the entity speaking to him, telling him mm. what he needed to do or, or things he needed to focus on. Me was a back and forth. But I asked really? to see them, and he said, "You're not, you're not ready to see us. Like you're like you're you're not supposed to see us." So instead, Whoa. the things that we would talk about would show up in my head, and let's say like every single person or thing that it brought up would give me like. A green, like let's say, I don't know, one of my friends would come up, and it would be like that person's face, and then at the bottom you'd see like uh, a percentage of how good or bad, and being good would be green, red would be red, or bad would be red. Mm. Like as far as like a good person, bad person. Yep, and then if I disagreed, I could argue with it. It was it was gnarly. How did that go? Did they listen to you when you argued with them? Uh yeah, uh, for some for some for some stuff yeah, but what do you what do you think that the beings are? So for yeah, can you maybe describe what they look like, bro? Uh, like me right so now. So one thing I know about psychedelics <laughs> in this elf hat. is what? <laughs> right? <laughs> Did they look like me in this elf hat? <laughs> this, this is fucking ridic- <laughs> ridiculous. We're talking about alien experiences, telepathically communicating on the Christmas with episode, godlike creatures. And you're wearing a fucking Buddy the Elf <laughs> outfit. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Where did you even get that, dude? Did you have that, like, ready to go? <laughs> I'm going to a Christmas party, and this is what I'm dressed oh, up okay. as. Okay, okay. No. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, but yeah, they looked like, um, you know, as far as what I know about psychedelics, is like, there's, there's one school of thought that's like, there are universal archetypes and like truths that are given to you by the medicine, like intrinsic to the medicine. And there's another school of thought that is your like existing mental framework and like the archetypes that we have in our culture are like the, the basis for like what you see on the medicine. So all that goes to say, that's like a very scholarly way to say they looked like the aliens from the Simpsons. (laughs) Oh shit! Yeah, like they had like you know like big heads and they're green like tentacles and shit. No, no, they didn't have tentacles. They had like cloaks. They had cloaks on. They were like very regal and like royal. And uh, we were That's communicating telepathically. They were like telling me the secrets of the universe and like they were telling me this ancient wisdom that I can't even put into words. Um, like vibration. We were communicating via vibrations. Like that's how, and actually my girlfriend at the time, uh, told me like, this is a concept. And I think quantum mechanics were like the part where I was saying like, you're at, I was atomizing, like splitting into a million pieces. Um, she said, that's like a concept in like black holes. And like, that's how you travel. People think to other dimensions. Like you're supposed, like you go through this wormhole or whatever the fuck. And it like splits you up into a million pieces and then you like resurface in another dimension. Um, I'm probably butchering that, but that's like my understanding of it. So that pretty much fucking I need to happened. Get, like I was I need to have Neil deGrasse Tyson on. We need to figure this shit out. Oh no, he's gonna fucking rip us apart. He's gonna be like, Oh yeah, like there's no God and like blah blah blah. Idiots. Like <laughs> yeah. small brained American. <laughs> yeah, and buddy the elf. <laughs> Uh, but no man it was it was crazy and like coming out of that i was like how do i even process this dude like what does this even mean like 
And uh, I'm still, I'm kind of left at a loss of words. I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this information? Like, well, I mean, what did you, like, what did you gain from your experience? Um, a lot of clarity. At the end of the experience, it gave me a mm. top five things I have to focus on. And mm. yeah, uh, one of the things like I, I've I've talked about this on the pod, so I won't get into it too much. But one of the things was uh, cancer, and uh, I was like, "What?" You know what I mean? At the beginning of the ceremony, the shaman's like, "Hey, focus on what you're here for. Like, what's bothering you? What What do you want to get out of this? Focus on that." Right? Experience starts, and I had a few few things other a few other things happen, but at some things that I would bring up and then we would talk about that, but sometimes the entity would be like, all right, let's talk about this. And when it came to the end, it gave me that list of things I have to focus on. And the top thing was cancer. And I was like, what the fuck? What do you mean cancer? And it was like, don't freak out. It's minor. Uh, but you have cancer and you have to deal with it when you get back home. And I was like, what? Okay. And right when that happened, or right when that happened in my brain, the shaman got up, came in to do a one-on-one with me, and put his hand on the back of my head. And then I, in my head, I was like, oh, like, and I could feel like a, a point on the side of my head, like I have a mole on the side of my head. And uh-huh. I felt that pulsating. And he put his hand on the back of my head. And in my head, I thought, dude, you're on the wrong spot. And then he moved his hand from the back to right where the fucking mole is. And when he did that, so you, he started blowing smoke on it, and it made it feel good. Uh huh. So, do you think you have cancer? You think that's a cancerous so, mole? Maybe I don't know, man. But like looking back, like I, uh, I've had pain in my head there, like probably months, months ago, and it still hurts, uh-huh. like to this day. I'm getting pain there. So it's maybe something that was in my subconscious that I wasn't even like, I was like, oh, you know, it's downplaying it maybe. And yeah, so I guess update on that is I've, um, I went to the doctor and I'm just waiting for an MRI. Ah, shit, dude. Yeah, I hope it's all right, man. Yeah. That's mad weird about the shaman coming over to you though. Whoa. Like, man, we never communicated. First of all, it was pitch black. There was no light. I never talked to him because one, he doesn't speak English. He only spoke Spanish. I don't uh-huh. speak a fucking lick of Spanish. I can say fucking dos cervezas, uh-huh. but not very helpful in the moment. And how, how, how did he know to move his hand? First of all, how did he know to get up? But the, the, our shaman took a bit of ayahuasca too. And he said that that was to like connect with us. Yeah. 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 So, wild shit, dude. Dude, yeah. that's the stuff like. I'm a pretty skeptical guy. Like before ayahuasca, I was like pretty much fact based and like science and everything. And fuck, dude, like a few of these experiences and shit like that. It's just like, dude, there's some, there's something going on, dude. Like we're not alone here. Like the Santa Claus I don't know if really exists. <laughs> like I don't know if you want to call it God or Allah or whatever the fuck, but like there's something, dude. I mean, especially like me and like the the uh the entities i experienced it was so vivid and they were so real and i know that they put us here like this is where i get i sound like fucking alex jones but like i know that they put us here like those alex are the gods. like i met them yeah dude but i met them you know what i mean like i i saw them i don't know if that's yeah. what they look like or whatever but like i saw something i felt them they're communicating like very real energy to me like through and you know it's like it's like dog whistles right like humans aren't equipped to hear the vibrational frequency of a dog whistle right or like mm. in infrared light or whatever like there's there's like spectrums of of uh vibrational frequencies that we're not meant to understand and i think the same thing is happening with this interdimensional travel situation where because dude the third time i drank it something very similar happened dude like i um, I felt their energy like they were they were they were communicating with me, man. Like it wasn't as vivid as the experience I described before, but the third time was like they were there, they were in the room, they were like communicating with with me via their vibrations. They were 
speaking in tongues and like it was uh very real dude and so and i talked to the shaman afterwards and he's like yeah there's some people that are gifted with this ability to talk to the the others basically and um because i know this is like not an uncommon thing on on dmt to like be able to have these yeah. like otherworldly experiences but a lot of people that i was with didn't have anything like this like in all the groups i was in no one else described communicating with like the others they call them so i don't know it's just, it's just it just feels very real man and i feel like there's something else that's going on that's like beyond our understanding you know i'm 100 percent on board with you there man because how the fuck do you experience how the hell do you ex explain those experiences you just can't man so listen i i think we should yeah. move on to the top five and into this week's top five we're doing the worst things ever <laughs> so connor it's gonna be a good one what dude. is your number one worst thing ever uh, okay so am, am i gonna say all my five and then you say your five is that how we're gonna no do so you go one i go two and three you go four and five it's like snake draft and we can't pick okay. the same ones okay cool so I guess my top five. I start with the five, right? We're doing, we're counting down, right? So this is different than top five because you, it's, it, it's like a draft because if I pick something that you have, you can't then pick that. People then vote on the top fives, which ones they think is right. the worst of the worst. Okay. Okay. So we're not like ranking them. It's just like top five in general. Yep. Okay. Okay. Sweet. All right. So I will start with when you have to sneeze, but you can't. Oh. This is, yeah, because it's so embarrassing. You're in public and you just look like a maniac. You're just like, uh, 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 uh. and if you're in a different country, you can't explain like, oh yeah, I'm fucking. You just look, uh, uh, uh. you know. <laughs> Sneezing in general is pretty weird, right? Because isn't like the bless you why we say that or like gesundheit or whatever is like mm. because we used to think that evil spirits used to come out of us. Yeah, I think it's where like your soul escapes your body when you sneeze and then you have to like, yeah. put it back in. <sighs> I don't know, dude. Those weirdos that's, believing that's in spirits. Ha ha ha. All right. So my number one. <sighs> hangovers. Ooh. Reason I say hangovers. Listen, we do continuously drink and it happens, but I'm talking about those bad ones. The ones that take about three, four days to come back from Ooh. where you're just, you know, on the toilet, you're getting that anxiety. Those yeah. are the ones I don't like. The Especially ones like that on I'm probably going to feel after the... my Christmas party. So you've been doing that a lot lately? Like when it becomes the Wednesday scaries, <laughs> the older you get, right? Yeah, every day is just terrifying, yeah. really. Uh, so my number two, because we're going snake draft. Uh -huh. This one is, I knew you wouldn't get this one, but this would probably be my number one, is when you accidentally step on your dog and then you have to convince them that you still love them. You hear the cry like, Ey! and then you're like, no, 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 I, I didn't mean to hurt you. I love you. Come, <laughs> come back. <laughs> uh, so you have a heart. It's tragic. Though. See, people like me, uh, you know, I take pleasure in that. You know, I like... <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> stepping stepping on the, the 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 servants right right the worst thing is not stepping on the servants. actually that was the next on my list is not stepping on the servants <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i just i i just love the the i love dogs and i just don't want to hurt them uh that's very sweet of you buddy all right, mine is my next one is flying. I hate oh. flying. It is, it has become. I just despise the whole process. Like especially after having a motorcycle, after having a car, after having any level of freedom with traveling. Even a bus is better. Like you can get up, you can walk around. You know, I'm sure on some buses they let you smoke. <laughs> like on a plane, they're like <laughs> sit here. 
Look at that sign. When the sun, when the sign lights up, you buckle your fucking seatbelt. This is how you buckle it, by the way, because you've never you can't say bomb. It. Fucking, I love saying yeah, bomb. Yeah, right. yeah it's, it's a great word. It's so fun. You fucking, especially being in the U.S. I don't know how it is in Canada, but the U.S. TSA, like they're so strict. Like you can't bring so many things. Oh, and like it's the the strictest in the world by far. Yeah, it's fucking miserable, dude. Like I, I used to live in Japan, and I would leave the country, and it's just like it's just a metal detector, and they're just like, all right, off you go. Like, oh, that was easy. Like you didn't fucking search my bowels for a fucking toenail clipper, like. <laughs> It's ridiculous, dude. So, so it's uh, I guess uh, air travel having to deal with the systems and uh, being stuck yeah. on the little fucking plane, the little seat in the plane. Yeah, it's just being angle. an NPC. You're just being subjected to. <laughs> seriously, you're just like being told what to do all day. Like you have no autonomy whatsoever. The food costs a bunch of money. Like you have to eat this. You can't bring your own food. It's just like. Fuck, dude. There's no level of freedom or like personal space or anything. It's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you there. <sighs> and it's just tough because traveling, you have to fly sometimes. It's just like, I just, I just want to be wealthy already so I can just fly first class and just not have to worry about being in a piece. You get the lounge, you get the cocktails, you get a nice big seat, you know? Yeah, I think this is the 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 plug uh, opportunity for uh, for me to be like, hey guys, listen, Connor's got some great content on Patreon. I also have Patreon, so if you're looking to support, so that we don't have to deal with air airport travel or uh, flying, please support. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, yes. A lot of times we'll just pop up in a video. I'm like, oh look, I'm in India. Ha ha ha! It's so fun. But like, I had to work to get there, people. It was not a pleasant experience getting there. My last night right. shits have been diarrhea, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. India's I wouldn't even been call rough, it shit. Dude. The level of, yeah, the level of liquid in my bowels, I wouldn't even call it shit. It's like some other <laughs> concoction. It's like a derivative of peeing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yellow. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, my next one is people who only want to talk about politics. Oh, I think you mostly get those in the U.S. CNN, Fox News, what's up? Yeah, but I will say this, man. Being abroad, people find out I'm from the U.S. and they just want to talk about fucking U.S. foreign policy. Like I know, like I'm some encyclopedia. Like I met this guy on the street the other day in India. Spoke perfect English. I was like, oh, we're going to get along great. And he was just like spouting off all these statistics about like, fucking u.s hegemony and like the patriarchy and like oh fuck you guys do you think you're so special i'm like dude and i said i said multiple times i'm like dude i had nothing to do with any of this like i'm sorry you feel this way whatever he's like oh i'm not talking about you i'm talking about your government i was like well then can we just drop it like i i have nothing just, just okay you're angry like that i just born here, okay i'm just a guy. small brained american <laughs> i was like i don't know what you want from me dude like just a punching bag to like vent i don't know yeah, yeah, that sucks, man. But, yeah, it's the worst. It's a challenging one. Like, I, have, I heard a comedian explain it. Like, if you get stuck in one of those situations, there's, like, no really good way to get out of it. Because, I mean, oh, except for saying... Like, I, I've got one. Like, oh, yeah? What? what? Just, to, yeah, yeah, just say, yeah, yeah I, I completely agree, man. Can you help me move to your country? <laughs> uh. <laughs> How do I become a citizen? Can you, do you want to sponsor me? Perfect. Right, right, right. Where right. do you live? Okay, thanks. Right. <laughs> like, I'm dying to leave. Please help me. Yeah. Mm. That's, why, that's why I'm in your country. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to over, overextend the so, visa, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna, so my number three is having to eat the end piece of sliced bread. Oh, <laughs> that's not that bad, dude. fucking worst. It's no, the dude. fucking worst. There's there's not a second side of bread. I don't like it. I throw them both out, and I don't <laughs> trust people that eat that piece of bread. <laughs> dude, think about this. Think about this. So, a hamburger. What's a hamburger bun? It's like two yeah, it, end pieces put together. Yeah, but the 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 outer shell is not as hard as the sliced bread one it's it's nice and spongy you know 
Mm. That's what yeah, I, 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 I want. Say, I want soft on both sides. Yeah. I bet there is a brand of bread, though, that does have a soft undercarriage. You it's, know what I mean? It's like, um, it's like one side soft and the other side's like sandpaper. That's what it's like. If they could, if they could just make a loaf of bread out of hamburger bun dough, so that the end piece oh. is just a hamburger bun, round and squishy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, million dollar idea. All right, you heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the 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 sliced bread one's really bad. That's definitely one of my worst ones. Uh, next one, Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> Low hanging fruit, the bro. <laughs> absolute fruit. worst. Jeffrey Epstein and anybody who's had anything to do with him. I'm talking about Damn. the Clintons. I'm talking about you, Oprah. We've seen the flight logs. Chris Tucker. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Uh, that's hilarious. That's so just funny. Was, uh, and I mean, like, have you have you followed what was happening with uh, Jeffrey Epstein's sidekick, basically uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, her trial? Oh yeah, his his ex wife, right, or former wife? Yeah, like associate slash person he used to date or whatever. But it's the I didn't follow much, but she got it, she got sentenced, right? She she did. Um, mm. And the interesting thing about that is she's the first person to have trafficked humans. That weren't referenced in the um, in the court, like they didn't say who who was the culprit of the traf- of the sex trafficking. Mm. Like they didn't mention her by name, uh, J- Jelaine Maxwell. No, like that they didn't mention who she mean? was helping sex traffic these people to. Oh, weird. Yeah. Why? What a lot. Why do you think that is? Uh, probably because. It was serving a lot of rich people who don't want to be named. Uh, I mean, like yeah. Bill Gates was on that island. Like, just Google the list. It's listen. Maybe some people didn't know yeah. what was going on, but like some people were on the island like twenty three times. Like, you never noticed that some of the people there were like thirteen, dude. Like, that's pretty messed up. Yeah, that's a whole thing where like people just kind of drop that, eh? People just quit talking about that. Like after he died in prison, like there was the meme that went around or whatever. But like that to me was like a defining moment where I was like, okay, like I, I'm going to listen to the conspiracy theorists like a little more frequently now. Like kind of turn me to the dark side as far as like I, I was I was listening to a I was listening to a comedian and he was and he was like, why are we focusing on what you know? Kevin Hart tweeted 20 years ago or what a comedian said about, you know, a joke about a comedian said, but like, we're letting these child sex fucking rapists on the loose Mm. or not necessarily on the loose, but like, we're not like pursuing that. Like what, what, what's even worse because they're running our fucking world, you know, like they're the world leaders and they're just like fucking kids apparently. Ooh, that's yeah, gruesome, it's, dude. it's disturbing, man. Yeah, for sure. Ooh. All right. Well, should I go? <laughs> I don't know how to fucking segue yeah. from that, dude. That's fucking dark. Next one. Uh, worse, uh, butterflies. I don't like butterflies. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, yeah, right. Fucking. Uh, <laughs> I don't like elves. I'm racist against elves. <laughs> How does that feel, Phil? Huh? <laughs> that actually is a nice segue to my next one. Uh, my next one is racism. Oh, yes. Racism is bad. Did you know that? Yes. It is bad. <laughs> it is. Yeah, especially, you know, travel in the world. I see, like, you know, the U.S., the Western world, France, everywhere gets a really bad rap. For being racist and then you like go around the world and you're like oh wait like this is just a thing about the world like everyone has their own racists and they're usually like old people that haven't traveled and dude even in even here in pakistan dude like they uh they uh you know there's there's racist people against indians which is like the same fucking oh, yeah. country basically but yeah yeah, yeah. it's a thing all no, right it's it's 
It's just that it's, I believe, the uh, racism in the U.S. is more well documented or talked about. And people think that that's the only place that it actually happens, right? Yeah, for sure. But it's like, but like you're saying, once you do leave, you see that obviously there's other forms of racism everywhere else. Yeah, I mean, it's like a sad reality that I think it's like our tribal nature. I think it's like where we come from and we have to have to like grow out of it you know and i think traveling really helps honestly i mean because like i've was in india for like three weeks and then you know i come to pakistan and like people here haven't even been to india and they're like telling me how it is and like oh it's so bad i'm like well dude i was there like have you even fucking been like <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but like the country like pakistan was made and they basically separated muslims and buddhists Right. That's that's how the. Yeah. And they, I mean, listen, they, they've they had a lot of like, I don't know if you follow, but like terrorist attacks in the past, like uh, mm. in India, yeah. in Pakistan. So like you can understand, like, let's say Canada and the U.S., we would cont- continuously be at each other's throats, mm-hmm. you know, like bombing each other, shooting each other, you know, Canada beating the U.S. in hockey. Like we potentially wouldn't like each other, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. So I have like a a follow up. So Mm. uh, racism is very bad. But what's worse are the British. (laughs) (laughs) That's like that Austin Powers. uh, People who aren't considerate of other people's cultures and the Dutch. (laughs) (laughs) The British, dude, they're fucking, they're so high and mighty with their fucking free health care and there are no guns. They think they're so special. They want to lecture U.S. people on how to run a country and like how to make tea and like, are they chips or are they fries? Like, shut the fuck up. All right. America, number one. Don't ever forget that. Number one. <laughs> oh, my God. A good portion of my listeners are English, so this is going to go over well. Oh, Jesus. A lot of subscriptions coming mail. your way, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> right? Fucking yanks. Yeah. No, honestly, I, I spent a month in the UK. I, I had a great time. I'm just fucking around. But uh, they do. It's funny. Like you mentioned, you're from the US and they just have all these fucking opinions about, oh, just, oh, my God. Like I haven't experienced as much hate in any country. As I have in the UK. Like, they just love to hate on Americans, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you guys definitely have a little bit of a rivalry. Um, yeah, it's fine. But, oh, uh, no, it's... It. Yeah, yeah. They did get the cute, you know? better of you, I guess. Oh, no, no, you guys drew in the World Cup, so I guess it was a uh, yeah. big victory for you guys. <laughs> you guys tied them at the soccer. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's funny. Uh, okay, so my last one here is being born in North Korea. A lot of countries in the world. A lot Damn. of countries in the world. Damn, you thought about it's this, the huh? toughest, <laughs> It's the toughest shake, right? We, we can have these aerial views of the world. You see all the fucking lights on from every different country, you know... You, Big big cities are super illuminated. You look over North Korea, and it's as dark as the ocean. Not many lights on, mm. right? You're only allowed a certain yeah. amount of haircuts. You say the wrong thing, you and your family are in a fucking concentration camp. If you try to leave, your your family gets put in a concentration camp. It's Ooh, that's tough. it's a tough shake. I guess the only like good job over there is like tour guide or something. I don't even know. Tour guide or maybe like. The Fuhrer, if you're the Fuhrer, maybe that's not as terrible. Drink all that. No, but I think, but dude, I mean, yeah, being him would obviously be great. But like, if you're close to him, I feel like that's so dangerous, dude. Like if you say the wrong thing or like, don't fucking give him the right compliment. Like you're donezo. No, he's had like wives go missing and stuff like that. Like he's, but dude, I actually saw, it might've been a vice piece on North Korea, but weed is legal there did you know that you can just buy like pounds of weed in north korea like it grows naturally and like they just sell it in the market and yeah maybe fact check that but i'm pretty sure i saw something yeah, shit where yeah that, that, that yeah. would be wild uh another bad part about north korea probably being have to like hang out with dennis rodman all the time like 
What's that about? <laughs> nah, he looks cool, dude. He looks like he looks like he'd be. He looks like he fucking parties, dude. That man looks. Oh yeah, crazy. Yeah, he was like married to Carmen Electra for a minute. Good for him, dude. Good for him. <laughs> yeah. He's aged poorly, but too, no, man. Like, you can tell he's, like, oh yeah, body up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. He's been to Vegas once or twice. Yeah. yeah. So, North Korea, so listen, let's, let's do a recap here. So, Connor has not been able to sneeze, which I fucking hate, being in an airplane or flying, mm-hmm. people who mm-hmm. only want to talk about politics, racism, and the English. <laughs> <laughs> and my five are hangovers the really bad ones for those who know those who know know when you accidentally step on your dog and you have to convince it you still love it which is really sad having to eat the end piece of sliced bread Jeffrey Epstein and being born in North Korea so that will be up the, the poll will be up on Sunday vote for who you think is the best or the worst, I guess. But anyways, Connor, <laughs> this was a lot of fun, buddy. Uh, do you have any? Yeah, do you have any? I guess things that you'd like to promote. Anything that's what's what's next for you here? Yeah, just follow my YouTube channel, subscribe, watch the videos. All my videos from Iraq are coming out right now, which are lit as fuck. Um, and then I have my India stuff, my Pakistan stuff. You guys are gonna want to see the Pakistan videos because it's very unique. Like I got inside access to like a very high up person, so I think it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, the Patreon, obviously, it's three bucks a month. You're going to help me get down the road. Like I said, I'm trying to get to Japan. So we got Bangladesh, all of Southeast Asia, and then like hopefully China. So like got a ways to go. Um, so any support you can give my way would be excellent. Thank you. Hell yeah. Small brain American. And all of platform. course, small brained American. You heard it here first. <laughs> He's he, he he's he's a fucking top YouTuber. You guys should check him out. Uh, and yes, Connor, we will be, ha- be having you on. I guess in the next, maybe after Christmas or something, we'll get you back on you and uh, and yeah, boy, Seal yeah. Nolan to talk about Iraq. Yeah, so thanks a lot yeah, for coming on, buddy. I I'll, I appreciate it. It's it, it feels like talking to a, to an old friend. So it's it, this was really ah, fun. Means a lot, but yeah, it's it's always easy coming on here and just chopping up the shit, man. It's super fun. I yeah, hope I didn't lose any of your listeners on the, the fucking alien talk, but eh, we'll see. <laughs> no, nah, man, we're pro-alien on here. <laughs> nice. nice. Alien anyway, lives matter. Take care, buddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy, thanks, man. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you later. Yeah, peace, dog. Thank you for listening to Two Beers Till Takeoff. Do you want free additional content or just to stay connected with the show? Then give us a follow on our social media platform. That means TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of them. Are you in need of podcast production services, video editing, or anything in between? Then look no further than Strut Sound Productions, the official producer of the Two Beers Till Takeoff podcast. Music produced by Alex Gagne. Check out his work in our show notes. Voiceover done by Viking Leo K. See you next week on Two Beers Till Takeoff. Thank <laughs> you.